Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Peter Steinberger, and I'm the founder of a company who sells a PDF SDK. We sell the binary and not the source code. And people still ask us, why do you still write Objective-C? The answer is not that simple. So everybody heard about the application binary interface and that Swift has no stable ABI yet and that it's somehow bad. The ABI describes how the data is laid out in memory, how the type metadata is stored, how function names are mangled, how the calling conventions are exactly, how calls into the runtime are made, and of course, the whole standard library. To give you an example, in older versions of Swift, array was 24 bytes. Now, it's eight bytes. So, if you have code which uses the new 8-byte array, and you have older code compiled with an older compiler which expects the 24-byte array, it would read uninitialized memory, and you know how that goes. Once the ABI is stable, the Swift team will have a much harder time to do such performance and memory optimizations. Now, Swift's ABI is a moving target. It was first mentioned as a goal in Swift 3 in 2015. And as Swift 3 got closer to the release, it didn't make it. In Swift 4, it, it kicked off with the goal of achieving binary stability. And as it in Phase 2, people reiterated the importance of ABI, and it was deferred. Now, Swift 5 kicked off, and stable ABI is a hard goal. And Apple even created an ABI dashboard, and this time it's really happening, at least we believe so. Now, why does this matter and how does this affect you? One of the reasons is if you use a compile cache. For example, you can build something with Cartage which stores the compiled binary to speed up your, your build time. Currently, you have to be very, very careful. There is no safety net. If, if you are lucky, you link two pieces with different compilers and you get a linker error. If you're not as lucky, things just crash in the runtime in a weird way. The second reason is that currently every app ships the Swift standard library, the runtime library that's needed for your programs to, to work. Once the ABI is stable, Apple can move this library and move it into the OS. This will save a few megabytes per application so if you do the math, if you have 100 applications, that's half a gigabyte. And it also allows you to reuse the shared library across the whole OS. So it only needs to be loaded once and not many, many times. So memory usage goes down, app startup speed goes up. Notice how I didn't say anything about binary frameworks, because we are missing one crucial thing, and that is the Swift module format. Um, the Swift module file is basically the binary equivalent of a C or Objective-C header file. That includes API declaration and even inline code. The compiler needs it for type checking and code generation. Module format stability is a stretch goal for Swift 5, and given that it's a really large and complex topic, it's likely not going to happen anytime soon. Now, this doesn't mean that Swift binary frameworks are not possible. In fact, they are. And uh, there is one very prominent one out there already by SAP, their Cloud Platform SDK. It works as long as you use the exact same version of Xcode. So down to the, the patch level if you're unlucky. You can see that this is quite limiting already. And SAP even has a blog post about that topic. And I checked yesterday, the last version available was for Xcode 9.1. To summarize, ABI stability is likely not as big as a thing as you might think. And if you build frameworks like me, write them in Objective-C, and we actually use a little bit of Objective-C++ to fill in some gaps of the language. And if you want to learn more, there is a blog post coming up. Thanks for listening. <laughs>